It's Sunday, March 24th here at the West End Gun Club. I'm in one of the private shooting bays here at the range. I'm going to test fire the Glock 19 that I reconfigured with a red dot sight. Uh, if you follow my Instagram at OKABJ, you'll probably have seen the teaser photo that I posted of this reconfigured uh, Glock 19. But it's got a Hollow Sun 507C. And uh, first time I've shot a Hollow Sun before, I've used an RMR before. And I didn't have really good luck with it uh, over time. But we'll give this a whirl because everyone's raving all about the hollow suns and how, how good they are, apparently, for, especially for the price. So I decided to risk it, and well, that's why we're out here this morning. Um, it's a little colder than I expected, but hopefully the sun will crest over the, uh, the hillside real soon and bathe us in some sunlight so it gets a little warmer here. But let's get set up and started shooting. Here's the Hollow Sun 507C on top of a Glock 19. This is a Brownell slide. Um, Brownell sells Glock slides now. This one's RMR cut, so I bought one of theirs. This is on sale. I think I paid 160 for the slide. Uh, I'd rather just do that instead of sending my slide to get milled. Um, just seems easier for me, so I can just swap back and forth between the stock slide and this slide. And I just swapped all the parts over. Well, what I ended up doing was buying all new parts for that slide. But then I realized when I was uh, when I was uh, going to swap the slides from the this one to the, for the stock one, I realized that I had the skimmer trigger in there. It's that Glock Triggers uh, brand. It's called the skimmer trigger. I think Haley Strategic has a has a uh, partnership with them. But the uh, slide has some of the polished parts, like a polished firing pin. Uh, polished firing pin safety so I had to take those parts out of my stock Glock slide put those in this one and I just put the OEM parts back in the OEM slide. Um, for those of you wondering why I didn't buy a Trigicon RMR instead I have owned a Trigicon RMR before several years back I owned one RM07 which is the adjustable LED one had it on a Glock 17 so I went through three of them First one lasted a month. I was out here at West End Gun Club one day, and it had snowed the day before, actually, uh, coincidentally. But I was shooting, and when I was firing, I was wondering, why is my why does it look all funky, right, when I reacquired this, the, the dot? Come to find out that the front element on the RMR flew off, and it fell in the snow, I couldn't even find it. So, sent that back to Brownells, got a replacement. The second one from Brownells that I got was DOA. It wouldn't power on, no matter what I did, and I was trying to force the battery, hold the battery in place while it turned it on, it still wouldn't turn on. So I sent that back to them, got a third one. Third one was good, lasted a year, but I was having some intermittent problems where like the LED would, some the dot would sometimes kind of flash or it would uh, go really bright and then go back down after on recoil. And then, you know, I kind of just shrugged it off. Then about a year of ownership, I was firing and I noticed sort of my shots were going one way and then I was trying to adjust it and come to find out that the windage adjustment had failed so the red dot was moving back and forth left and right so I just finally got sick of the RMR and I just said hey sent it back to Brownells wrote him a letter said this is my problems I went through three of them uh, I just want my money back because Brownells has a hundred percent lifetime satisfaction guarantee and they just sent me back a check in a couple weeks so that's when I ditched red dots and I kind of want a red dot again I wanted a red dot again but I didn't want to risk up the RMR and I know they have the second gen RMRs out there but I didn't want to spend another I think an RMR type 2 costs 700 right now 600 or so and I didn't want to go buy another RMR for 600 bucks get another slide and go through the whole rigmarole and it fails again but people were talking about this hollow sun 507c which actually has the same footprint as the RMR so this will fit on any RMR cut slide People were talking it up like it was the greatest thing on the planet. They're only 300 bucks. Um, once the word got out, these were sold out everywhere and they were just hard to acquire. And so finally, I think Kenzie's Optics, um, who I bought a scope from before, got the, arm, got the Hollow Sun 50C in stock and they sold out pretty quick. But I decided to get one for 300 bucks and I bought the slide for 160, 170. So I'm not out, out too much money, it's 500 bucks, so it's another Glock. But I decided to risk it because everyone's talking about how great this thing is. 
So I wanted, I wanted to, you know, see for myself. So anyway, that's the story with this and my previous experience with Trijicon RMRs on Glocks. Yep. Sorry, we're hit shooting low. While I'm adjusting it, I can hear tactile clicks, so that's one good thing. It's quiet or very silent, but you can hear it. So it's good to know that you're you're actually making adjustments. Much better. So I think all I needed to adjust was elevation. I might need to come over on windage a little bit, but Yeah, come on, windage. Here's a quick 10 round group just sighting in. First round, second round, third round, fourth round, and then I just walked it in here. And so I got it sighted in right here. Um, maybe I'll come right just one more, but it should be relatively good. I'll just aim me for the A here. And this is only about 10 yards, 15 yards. Um, this bay doesn't go that very deep. I think this is barely 20 yards at the end. So we'll shoot 20 yards of steel. Or shoot steel at 20 yards, rather. I mixed in a little bit of AR shooting along with the Glock 19 because I just haven't been getting enough repetitions with the AR-15. Um, I could tell because my trigger control is really bad. My double taps and my hammers just aren't smooth and sometimes I wasn't resetting and coming off correctly and so I wasn't getting very fast, uh, very fast times when it comes to double taps, you know, uh, three round groups or whatever, three round hammers. But it is what it is, just gotta, you know, take some time every now and then to just get behind the AR. But as far as the Glock 19 with the Hollow Sun 507C, first impressions are really good. It's holding zero in the first couple hundred rounds, 250 rounds. 
I think I shot 300 rounds, about 250, it's 250 rounds today. It's holding zero, which is good. Granted, that's not enough to get a good durability test. I'll probably need to shoot 1,000 to 2,000 rounds with this to make sure that it's holding up. But compared to my RMR, or the, the RMR that I used to have, I'm noticing there's that distortion on the edges. I, didn't remember, I don't recall that with the RMR, so I need to get behind one to see if I get that same image distortion on the edges of the, uh, the view. The greenish tint is there, which is similar to the RMR, but I think it's more saturated with the Hollow Sun 507C. Dot acquisition's good. I like the controls. And it seems to be doing well. I mean, I'm liking having the red dot on the handgun again because I can actually shoot better because I can actually focus on that red dot as opposed to the front sight because if you know, I have some sight problems in the way I have to set up my glasses. I can't see the front sight crisply or crisp at all when I try to focus on it just due to the way my, my, my actual eyeball is set up along with my, my corrective lenses. So it's nice to be able to have this red dot because it's great um, in general for shooting. Time will tell if this is gonna be durable or rugged. Again, I, my first RMR lasted a month before the front element came off. And then the third RMR that I had, as I mentioned earlier, lasted a whole year before it just failed. So there are a lot of things with the Hollow Sun 507C I like more than the Type 1, the first gen RMRs. And I'll, I have a write-up that I'm gonna publish on my blog at okevj.net covering a lot of these details. But so far, so good. The brownness slide is pretty decent. Not bad for 160 bucks, 170. A um, couple flaws in it, or at least one flaw, like there was a ding in it when I got it, but I didn't care. It's like small and minute and you don't really care because I'm not going to beat this slide up anyway. The front serrations are pretty cool, but they eat up on the kydex on insertion of the holster. And so you're getting that kydex biting into it. Um, but it is what it is. You're going to expect holster wear on a slide, um, especially when you're on kydex holsters. But I do like having front serrations to get better grip on there. I do like the fact that there's two posts that come out from the RMR cut that go into the, the actual red dot side itself. So you're getting a little bit added, um, I guess, points of contact as opposed to just the screws themselves. You actually have these two posts sticking out. So I'll have uh, photos of that on my blog. <coughs> Excuse me, still covered from my cold. But as far as that's concerned, I think everything is really cool so far. Um, we'll find out in the next thousand or two thousand rounds whether or not this is going to hold up. Uh, one other note, I am getting some funky uh, brass ejection. I noticed some of it was coming f straight back and over the top. Not sure why, maybe it's because I got a brand new recoil spring in here, but this is kind of a brand new slide in general because the recoil spring, the slide itself, so I've got to wear it in a little. But the, some of the brass did hit the, f the red dot sight, the front element injected forward which is kind of common. I've seen that on my original RMRs. And I saw the brass mark, so I just wiped it off and the front element looks fine, there's no scratches. So it is what it is. And that's one other point or one other contention that you have to uh, be aware of with regards to red dot sights is they are gonna get brass, they're gonna get hit by brass. And maybe that's what happened to my first RMR. It took a lot of hits to the front element and that, that's what shook it loose. But then again, these red dot sights are supposed to be built ruggedly, so you expect it to hold up to that kind of uh, that kind of abuse. Haven't been trying to rack the slide against any hard objects because you know some people rack the slide using the uh, using the red dot as kind of that extraction, you know, against the the point of contact, kind of to prove its durability or ruggedness. Haven't tried that yet. Um, I mean, I kind of should, but I'm hoping that this is all holding up well. As I need to check the screws when I get home to see if they've loosened up at all, but I, they are tightened to 15 inch pounds, which might be a lot, a lot for these small screws, but that's what I set them to, and they are Loctited in. Anyway, that's kind of it for now. I'm gonna have my article on okabj.net covering the Hollow Sun 50C and the Brownell slide setup. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just get all this stuff cleaned up and get out of here. Packed up all my gear and I'm pulled over on the main line. There's no one here on the main line because the range is still technically closed. It's only open for full members. So the range is usually open on Friday, Saturday, Sunday for limited members for like the main line. But um, there's no range officers here. It's the range is kind of shut down right now only for full members while the creek is still flowing. So 
when I pulled in this morning and I crossed the creek, it was actually a little bit rockier than I expected it to be. Um, the water's moving about the same as it was last time I was out, but it's just all those rocks, because it's not even dirt, it's all rocks that's lining the creek bed. So when you're driving on it, you're moving around, you're slipping, your tires are slipping. So, and you're also jumping, you're, the ruts are constantly changing because of the weight of the vehicles. As each vehicle crosses it, it makes it different for the next one that's crossing. So um, it is actually a little bit hairier than it was last week. So people with, uh, with low, lower clearance trucks probably need to be careful. I'm running, I'm always running four low on it and I turn to my lockers just in case because I just don't want to start spinning on those rocks while I'm driving over the creek. So I'm just trying to get over it as safely as possible and maximizing all the, all the, uh, the features that I have on the Jeep. Anyway, that's kind of it for today. It wasn't much of a range vlog, just short of testing the hollow sun and getting some trigger time behind the AR. But um, yeah, next time I'm out, maybe Desert Marksman because I'm trying to get some shooting a distance sometimes. So I'd like to just go out there and shoot a little bit of four, five, and 600 yards on steel. So maybe that'll be my next range trip. I'm not entirely sure. It's just so convenient to come down to West End and shoot room fires. So uh, we'll see what happens. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, March 24th, Sunday at the West End Gun Club. Uh, thanks for watching the vlog, and I'll see you in the next one.